Welcome to another coding math video. Today we'll be exploring the concept of oscillation. Let's start with what is an oscillation? An oscillation is a movement back and forth at a regular speed around a center point. And you may have seen examples of this movement in the real world, whether it be the motion of a pendulum or the motion of a swing in the playground. This motion is called a periodic motion due to the repeated back and forth movement that happens over a period of time. And what is so interesting about oscillation? If you understand the basic concept of oscillation, it will allow you to create many visually engaging pieces of work, including these two, which I'll be making coding tutorials out of, so you can check those out later. The type of oscillation that we'll be focusing on in this video is called a simple harmonic motion. And what is so special about a simple harmonic motion is that it can be represented by the sine and the cosine functions. You may have heard me talking about the sine and cosine functions in my other coding math video where I show you how to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. In this video, let's review that quickly and then I'll show you how it relates to oscillation. In order to convert a point in the polar coordinate system with variables r, radius, and angle, theta, to Cartesian coordinates x and y, you will need to use two equations based on the rules of trigonometry. The two equations that you need are x equals to r times cosine of angle and y equals r times sine of angle. So let me also declare the three variables x, y, r. Let's do r equals to 100 and let's start at the angle at 0. So right now we have calculated the values of x and y and now I'm going to draw an ellipse at x and y, and let's do a size of 10. So first, I want to use a translate function to translate the point of origin to the center of the screen. And then I'm also going to draw a line from 0, 0 to x and y. Let me also map the angle value to my mouse location from 0 to width to 0 to 360. And because I'm using the angle mode degree, I also need to change the angle mode here to degrees. All right, so just to show you that by using this equation, you can see that the polar coordinates goes along the circular path. So from the angle of 0, the x coordinate is at the length of the radius while the y coordinate is at 0. Now, when I move the mouse to here, which is when angle equals to 90, you can see that now y equals to the length of the radius and x is equal to 0. Then when I move to angle equals to 180, x equals to negative radius and y equals to 0. And if I move to 270, now it's switched where y equals to negative radius and x equals to 0. And then at 360, we're back at the original, right? Where x equals to radius and y equals to 0. You may have noticed that when I move it here and y is at the top, I say that it is negative. That is because in computer graphics, y goes from top to bottom is from negative to positive. Two things that I want you to notice with what I just show you. One is that the range of x and y goes between negative radius to positive radius, which right now it's at 100, right? So it went between negative 100 to positive 100. The second thing that I wanted you to notice is that when x is at its peak, right? So at negative 100 or positive 100, y equals to 0. And vice versa, right? When y is at negative 100 or positive 100, x is at 0. So the values alternate. So how is this relating to oscillation? So what if I just draw out either x or y? Let's start with x. So I'm going to put 0 in for the y values. And instead of mapping this to angle here, what if I just increment the angle variable by 1? Ta-da! 
what do you see? This is an oscillation motion, right? Oscillating motion in the x direction. Okay, let's switch. What if we do this, but in the y direction? Same exact back and forth motion around a center point. And this is a simple harmonic motion where an oscillation can be represented by a sine and a cosine function. So instead of keeping the x value equal to zero here and vice versa, the y value equal to zero in the previous example, what if we draw it out relative to time? So we're gonna increment the time. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'm gonna call it t for time. And let's set that to zero initially. Then I'm gonna replace x here with t and then t is going to be incrementing by 1 as well. I want to start at width equals to 0. We don't need this line anymore and let's put background in here. Let's try that. Whoa, what do you see? What does that look like? looks like a wave, right? Okay, so that is when we draw out the y. What if I change this to x? All right, so same exact shape, but different starting point, right? So actually, let's um, increase this width of the canvas, and then we're going to draw both x and y. Maybe I will make the x one black and then let's do red for the y. How about we do no stroke. All right, we don't need this anymore. And okay, let's try this. Isn't that interesting? What we did just now is representing the motion of a simple harmonic oscillator on a horizontal position graph. And we did that by introducing the time component. As you can see here, the sine and the cosine functions have the exact same shape, but with different starting points, which should not surprise you as we went over the fact that the values of x and y alternate when x equals to its extreme or the length of the radius y equals to zero and vice versa. Also, if you notice earlier in our code, both variables angle and t started at zero and incremented by one. So actually, we could have written out the sine and cosine functions as a function of t instead of of angle. Let's focus on just one function to understand the key components making up a simple harmonic motion equation. The ball is oscillating back and forth around a center point from one extreme to the other. The length of this extreme is the radius. Let's call this an amplitude. While the center point, let's call it an equilibrium point. Notice in computer graphics, the y direction goes from negative to positive as it travels from top to bottom. That's why the wave starts from bottom then going to the top. The time it takes to complete one cycle, we call this a period. And you can measure this distance from one peak to the other or from one trough to the other on this graph. Currently, one period equals to 360, or one t equals to 360. This is one revolution of a circle, right? Going from zero degree to 360 degree. What if we want to change the length of the period? We can adjust our sign function slightly. With this new adjusted equation, you can just fill in the value of the period that you want. So this is a simple harmonic motion, an oscillation represented by the sine and cosine functions, where you can change different parameters and get really interesting outputs. If you're interested in seeing how I use the fundamental concept of oscillation to create these two pieces of work, be sure to check my coding tutorials on both of them. See you there.